far we've been looking at real images. Real images are images that are formed when light rays actually reconverge. And uh, the last kind of image we're going to look at is called a virtual image. So first of all, let's talk about what the word virtual means. The definition of virtual, as given by Webster, says it's being in effect or appearance, but not in fact or name. So when we say we are going to virtual school, it doesn't mean we're actually going to a real school. We're going to something that has the appearance of school. There's a teacher, they're giving lessons, they're collecting homework, but there isn't a school in the physical, traditional sense. It's just sort of the appearance of school. Um, and we're talking about virtual images, which uh, has the exact same meaning. So virtual in general, in English, means having the appearance or the effect of something, but not, in fact, is actually there. So here's an example of a candle. So the candle is burning and it's sending out light rays, and those light rays come to my camera lens and they converge on a couple of pixels, and you guys can see a nice bright candle down here on the right-hand side. Some of those light rays, however, are going towards the mirror and they're bouncing from the mirror back to the camera, and it looks as if there is another candle here. It, it, it's almost as if there is a hole in the wall in an identical room on the other side, and there's a candle sitting on the sink on the other side of the wall. Um, and we would call this a virtual image. For all intents and purposes, the light rays are acting as if they're coming from a candle over here inside the wall, but there is no candle inside the wall. They're simply being reflected by the mirror so that there appears to be a candle in the wall. So we call this a virtual image. There's not really an image of a candle. and There's not really light rays converging back here behind the mirror. They're being reflected, so it just looks like it. So here's the idea. If there were uh, two tennis balls flying out and you saw one go this way and you saw a tennis ball go that way, where do you think the, uh, the person is standing who's whacking the tennis balls? Well, you would extrapolate back to an apparent point of origin. You'd say, well, hey, I think there's somebody standing over here whacking tennis balls based on the direction they're going. The same thing's true with light rays. If a light ray is going this way from a candle and another light ray from the same candle is going that way, you would infer that the candle must be back here. But you don't actually know that. There's another way to get light rays to follow these two paths, and that is to put a mirror here. And if this was a mirror, you could have a candle right here sending out light rays. They would go like this and they would bounce. And the one going this way would bounce that way. And to your eye, it would appear as if the light rays were coming from a candle back here behind the mirror. That's exactly what a virtual image is. The light rays appear to be diverging from a point where they're not actually diverging from. So we call this a virtual image. So let's say you are using a lens as a magnifying glass and some beams of light are going in this direction and one's in that direction and one's in that direction. You could say, hey, they appear to be coming from a bug that is magnified. Where does the bug seem to be? And so you could trace these back and you could say, hey, it looks like the object, whether it's a bug or a little candle or something, appears to be back here because that's where these three beams of light, which we can see on the right-hand side of the lens, that's where they seem to be coming from. This is their point, apparent point of origin, when in fact, that's not really where they're coming from. So here's a demo that kind of helps us visualize what's going on, all right? So here we have our old friend, the simulator. Um, our, our pencil is sending out light beams. Those light beams pass through a lens and they get bent and they reconverge over here. So we have an a projected image of the object over on this side. And we've already done some labs and we've talked about this and stuff. So here's what gets interesting. When the object is really far away, the image is pretty close to the focal point. But if I make this closer and closer and closer, the image gets farther and farther away and bigger and bigger and bigger. But what happens if my object is closer than the focal point? Well, you can trace the three beams of light this one goes parallel to the axis and it gets bent through the focal point and it keeps going. This one goes through the center of the lens and it's not bent at all. And the one that seems like it's coming from the focal point, so this one that's heading off in this direction, seems like it's coming from the focal point. It gets bent parallel. So these three beams of light are not going to converge. They are not going to form a real image. There is no point over on the right hand side, no matter how far you go, where those three beams of light will meet. So if your eye is over on the right-hand side, 
what it sees are three beams of light, and you can ask, hey, where do these three beams of light seem to be coming from? And so we can trace those back. If we trace them back, I'm going to move this a hair. These three beams of light appear to be coming from a really big pencil back here. And so this is exactly how a magnifying glass works. A small object placed near the focal point, but closer to the lens in the focal point, the light is bent in such a way that your eye perceives the source of origin of those light rays as a big object a little farther back, rather than the small object that is actually producing the light rays. So this is what we call a virtual image. There is not a real big pencil back here. The light rays don't even converge back here. It's just where they appear to be coming from. And so that's why it's a virtual image. All right. So here's kind of a summary of things we should know. Real images are formed when the distance to the object is greater than the focal length of the lens. And virtual images are formed when it's less than the focal length. So if my object is farther away than the focal point, the light rays converge over here and you get a real object. Even if you get really close, you get a real object over here. But as soon as we pass the focal point, now these beams on the right diverge. They don't form a real image, but there seems to be an apparent point of origin on the left side where there is an image that is bigger than the object. The light, these light rays seem to be coming from a large pencil. Okay, so that's what we mean by the distance to the object is less than the focal point. For real images, the light rays actually converge at a point on the other side of the lens and they form a real image. You can project the real image, you can put it on a screen, other people can see it. It's, it's where the light rays actually converge. On the other hand, a virtual image means the rays don't converge on a point on the other side of the lens. Instead, they appear to originate from the different location on the same side of the lens. So these light rays, which are bent, appear to be originating back here from a big pencil. Okay? That's what we mean. For real images, the distance to the image is greater than zero. It's positive, And the magnification is negative. Okay? So when we have a real image like this, the distance from here to here is a positive number. And the pencil is always upside down. The magnification is always negative. But if I have this in here, because the image is on the wrong side of the lens, its distance is negative, but it's always upright. And so that's what you mean here. For virtual images, the distance to the image is going to be negative, and the magnification is going to be positive. So this is actually going to be a clue we use. When we solve a problem and the distance to the image turns out to be negative, we know we have a virtual image. Okay? All right, so let's solve an example problem. I'm going to solve it geometrically, which again, we are not doing as part of this course, this abbreviated course. We would be doing this in class with paper and pencil and protractors and carefully drawn lines, but uh, this is part we're skipping, but it's instructive to learn how to do it because it kind of shows us what's going on. So here's our optical axis, here's our lens, and the focal point is 16 centimeters on either side of the lens. So in my scale, I have two blocks for every, uh, every centimeter is two blocks. So two, four, six, eight, ten. There's the object at ten, and 16 is the focal point. So the object, the source of our light, is closer to the lens than the focal point. We're going to get a virtual image. Now let's trace the beams of light. One beam of light goes parallel, gets bent through the focal point. One goes straight and doesn't get bent. And the one that seems like it's coming from the focal point, the one that heads off in this direction, gets bent parallel. So clearly, these three beams of light are not going to converge. They're not going to cross. So that we then ask, hey, where does it seem like they're coming from? So we use dotted lines to kind of show where it seems like they're coming from. This beam of light is coming straight, so it seems like it's coming from somewhere along there. We can draw this one back, and we can draw that one back, and they all seem to be originating back here. And so that is our virtual image. The beams of light leaving the lens appear to be coming from a large image back here. Okay. Now we can count blocks and figure out where this is. It's actually going to be 5.3 centimeters tall. If two blocks was two centimeters tall here, this is five and a third centimeters. And we can figure out how far it is by counting blocks, and it's about 26.6 centimeters 
from the lens, and it's on the wrong side. So the distance to the image is going to be negative 26.6. Okay? So that's kind of the diagram, and it'd be helpful if you sketch that, but we're going to solve it algebraically. So here's the same problem solved algebraically, and this is what you guys are going to do on your, uh, on your homework. Okay? So here we go. All right, so for this problem, we have a lens, and we have the focal length, which is at 16 centimeters, and our object is at 10 centimeters, which means our object is closer to the lens than the focal point. So I'm just going to draw kind of an object here, and we've got to try to trace the rays. So one of the light rays goes parallel, kind of like that, and it gets bent through the focal point, so it heads off in that direction. And... One of the light rays goes through the middle, and it doesn't get bent at all. And so you can see that these two light rays here are diverging. They're getting farther and farther apart. So what we're going to do is we're going to trace them back and try to find where it seems like they're coming from. So this one's kind of coming from this direction. This one's kind of coming from this direction. And so we can see that these light rays are actually coming from somewhere back here. So we're expecting a virtual image which is uh, behind somewhere back up in here, okay? So that's just kind of a rough sketch of a diagram. So now we're going to do what we always do. We're going to make our variable list. We're going to have a focal length. We have the distance to the object, the distance to the image, the height of the object, and the height of the image. So these are all the things that we care about. The focal length of the lens, it tells us, is 16 centimeters. And it tells us the distance to the object is 10 centimeters. And the height of the object is a 2 centimeter tall candle, so this is 2.0 centimeters. And we're trying to find um, the distance to the image, the magnification, and the height of the image. So we're going to do what we've always done. The first thing we're going to do is solve the lens maker's equation. So that's 1 over F equals 1 over DO plus 1 over DI. We're going to solve this for di. So if I bring this term here to the other side, I get 1 over di equals 1 over f minus 1 over do. And so I can go ahead and evaluate the right-hand side. That's 1 over 16 minus 1 over 10. And if I plug that in my calculator, um, I can get... 1 divided by 16 minus 1 divided by 10, and that's negative 0.0375, okay? So we have negative 0 0.0375. And so, remember, that's 1 over the distance to the image. So if I want the distance to the image, I've got to take 1 over this number. So I've got to take 1 divided by my last answer, that negative 0.0375, and I get negative 26.7. Okay? So the distance to the image is negative 26.7 centimeters. Now, it's negative because it's on the wrong side of the lens. The image should be over on this side if it's real, so that's the positive side for images, and since it's negative, it's on the other side. And 26 is about right, because remember, this was 16, so this would be about 32 over here, so it's somewhere in the right ballpark, okay? So there we go. We found the distance to the image, and we know it's a virtual image because the distance to the image is negative. The second thing we want to do is find the magnification. The magnification, of course, is negative, the distance to the image over the distance to the object. The distance to the image is this answer. The distance to the object is 10. So that is a positive 2.67. So it's 2.67 times bigger, which again makes kind of sense, sort of makes sense with our diagram here. This image, this virtual image, is bigger than the original object. And then the third thing we want to do is find the height of the image. The height of the image divided by the height of the object is the magnification, which tells us that the height of the image is simply the magnification times the height of the object. So we take 2.67 times, that's the magnification, times the 2 centimeters, which is the original height, and we get 5.34. So the um, height of the image is 5.34 centimeters. 
So there we go. We found the distance to the image, we found the magnification of the image, and we found the height of the image. And notice that this is positive, which means the image is upright, and it's bigger than one, so it's bigger. And then the height of the image is also positive, so it's above the axis. The image goes up here. All right, so we're going to solve some problems. The only thing you need to remember here is that if you have a distance to the object, which is less than the focal length, you're going to get a virtual image. The distance to the image will be negative, and uh, you'll be able to use all the exact same equations to solve the problem.